One engine that I know that you're probably familiar with is the power stroke. That one is super sensitive to the additive package. And they tell you that in your owner's manual, you need to check it on a regular every year. And if you don't add the package, it will take out that engine. So there's one that's very mm -hmm. susceptible to cavitation corrosion, which is these pitting that takes place here. <clears throat> you had a question about plugging in your car. If you've got a plug-in in your car or your pickup or a tractor or something like that, these are examples of cold starting aids. If you look at them, it's a cord. It's a cord with an element on it. This element looks just like what's in your hot water tank in your house. All it's designed to do when you plug it in is it heats up the water that's around it. Heat rises, so as it rises through your engine, it draws cold water in, warms it up, it rises, and will actually cause the water in your engine block to circulate and warms your cylinders up. Why do we see them on diesels and not so much on cars? How does a diesel engine start? What actually causes a diesel engine to start? Heated compression. And if it's cold out and I don't have any heat to help get this thing started, all of the heat from that compression dissipates into the cooling system and it will not start. That's why diesels start so hard. A gasoline engine uses a spark plug and the spark from the spark plug. So I don't necessarily have to have it. What would be the benefit of having a plug-in on my car? It's going to heat it up before I start it, which means it'll be a better lubrication. I won't have oil starvation for the first minute or two until it actually warms it up. The other thing is, when I start my car up, my heater actually works like right away because it's already got warm antifreeze in there. What's that? Can you just plug it in when you get home and get up and unplug it? You can. Has anybody, has anybody ever done that? Yeah. What was your bill at the end of the month? There's only one problem, and that's when you get your electrical built in. If you look at how big this is, if you know anything about your hot water tank, this takes a lot of electricity. And so it can get expensive if you just plug it in and run it 24 hours a day, even if you're not using your vehicle. It won't hurt it any. It's not going to affect your engine in any way. It's just going to affect your pocketbook. So the best thing would be to put it on a timer and have it turn on at least two hours before you want to start the engine and it will give you adequate time to actually warm up the engine. But plugging it in all the time, the only thing that hurts is your pocketbook. That's yeah, generator. Yeah, <laughs> the examples that I show you are block heaters. Those actually go right into the block. Most cars actually have an inline heater that goes in the radiator hose. It goes in the bottom radiator hose. If you want to add one in, you cut the radiator hose in half and you install it. And I've met a lot of people who said they don't work, and I used to say that they don't work. There's a secret to making them work. When these things operate, it heats the water around them, and that has to rise. If you put it in a radiator hose flat, it rises both directions. And if water is traveling both directions in a hose, what happens? It doesn't really move. It heats up that spot. It gets hot enough, the element shuts down. And so you have to put it on the uphill side of the radiator so that it actually travels up into the engine block and it will draw cold water down through the radiator and up through that hose. So the negative thing is it's always drawing really cold water through your radiator, but at least the heat is rising up into your engine. The other style of inline heaters is one that goes in the radiator, not the radiator, but the heater hose. You take your heater hose and you cut it and you stick it in there, and it actually has check balls. So it heats it up, and then it forcefully discharges it. And so if you put that in your car, your, your windshield defrosts. When you get in there, it's already defrosted because it's circulating hot water through your hot water heater. And then it goes in, and it actually goes through and heats your engine. Those are super, super efficient and work really well, plus a little added benefit. So there's a lot of them out there. And if you live in a cold climate, it's going to extend the life of your engine because it's not going to be so hard to start it, and you're not going to see that startup damage that takes place in cold conditions. So if you have it, plug it in.